Um, yeah, today is last day of GDC Europe this year, and uh, today with me here is uh, William Farnado from Mont Persistant, a French online magazine about games. And so, with your experience at Mont Persistant, what do you think games really want to read and be informed about? Well, to be honest, uh, people want to read some original content. So many fan sites or internet portals just cut and paste articles from uh, um, official sites mm -hmm. and uh, it, it's easy to do, it's quick, it makes uh, easy content, but I think readers now want something different, they want to read opinions and they want so some uh, articles you've been working on mm -hmm. and uh, read interviews so, and uh, multimedia content with uh, videos and uh, interactions, so that's a big uh, that's a stake for us mm -hmm. to, to be able to create uh, real original content and just not a uh, quote in the official site. Alright. Um, you were in charge of an EverQuest 2 website for a couple of years. Um, what do you think is the most important aspect of fan site? Well, fan sites is must be very close to the game companies because it doesn't exist if the game doesn't exist. It's a sure. kind of, so sounds so so uh, evident, but if you don't have a good game and a good community manager in front of you that exchanges with you, every, everything is going to crash. So running a fan site is not easy every day and then you, you have to, to get a team because you can't do it on your own. And uh, having a, a team, especially if you're working with volunteers, uh, may be sometimes very difficult because everybody has a family, a life and uh, keeping people working at night for... <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, you just uh, mentioned the communication between the community manager on the official side and uh, the team of fan sites and so on. What would you say? Um, what would you say to the current situation of that? Um, is the communication good, or what needs to be improved? I, it's really differs from one company to another, mm. and uh, I will speak uh, uh, as a French one person. Uh, most of the times. Game companies tend to forget us, mm. just uh, because we're not an English-speaking country. Uh, we must, I must admit, French are not very good English speakers. So we, they have to do a, a good, great job with translations or with locations, and they tend to forget us. And it's a shame because it's a huge market. Uh, I've read recently that 62% of the French population is playing video games on a regular basis. So we are 65 million persons. So we can. Imagine uh, there's, there's money to make, so so I, I can't say uh, one company is good, one is not. It depends if they just understand the stake or if they just want to reach this market. And uh, for example, we made a great job with uh, SOE for years uh, on the Abacus 2 France site, and uh, now it's, it's working fine. But and uh, with all the companies, it's uh, just uh, terrible. You can, <laughs> just can't work. So yeah. okay. Um. Considering the, uh, the general growth of the still young gaming industry, how will the position um, and the structure of fan sites and online magazines change over the next few years? Well, uh, I must be honest, but uh, <laughs> I think uh, fan sites uh, will be uh, the key to, to, to the development and to, for this business. Because, uh, as we can see, uh, global communities uh, worldwide communities and it's uh, something that uh, game companies want to reach mm. but it's very difficult because of cultural uh, distinctiveness mm. and uh, language uh, di difference so uh, if game companies don't use us as they should just to get uh, to reach the market mm. closely uh, I think they, they will lose the market share so yeah. if they understand this I think we can work uh, on an equal basis well, not Basis, they do, they create game, and uh, we are a very important part to play in the coming years. Okay, um, I know you're not a developer yourself, but of course, you're a gamer and you're passionate about games. So, if the god of gaming would grant you one wish to create the game you haven't dreamed of, and uh, no matter what technology needed, no matter how big the budget would be for that game, uh, what would that game look like? Well, it would be an MMO, of course, because uh, Montesquieu is working for, for MMOs, and that's what we like. Uh, technically, it would be full 3D, definitely, but with um, a real immersion, like uh, 
Jesse uh, remembers Minority Report movie. Mm -hmm. It should be in, f in the middle of the, uh, of the action, and uh, that's part of the techniques. But uh, uh, what must be important is the content, the quests, and uh, the environment. And uh, I would really love someday to find a real dynamic environment. Game companies, developers always tell us my next MMO will be in dynamic environment. Mm -hmm. We've been uh, hearing this for years and I've uh, never seen it, so <laughs> uh, that's uh, easy to say. So, so uh, a, a place that evolves like real life, mm -hmm. uh, with uh, you log one day and the second day is, is different. Some, I would like some huge world that would take days to three days just to get from one place to another mm -hmm. without months making things easy and to mm -hmm. reach a world because you would have to, well, put me some kind of uh, Maybe because I've been playing for years, some hardcore gamers <laughs> anymore. Yeah, sure. uh, not not the easy one, casual way that's mm -hmm. going uh, nowadays. F the basics, I think, you need a good game, and uh, we see nowadays uh, thousands, I say, of uh, MMOs coming uh, mm -hmm. on the market, and that uh, last for two, three months, well, I say six months, and go free to play, and mm -hmm. then disappear. So first of all, I, I would like just to have a real good game. <laughs> <laughs> of course. Yeah, sounds very good, this game. I hope every, uh, anybody is uh, doing that. So thank you very much for being oh. here and answering all questions. Thank you. Have fun with your panel today. <laughs> thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.